The story starts by introducing us to a guy named Sojin. He's the CEO of Wonderland Corporation and has youth, good looks, intelligence, and wealth on his side. But all these things don't make him happy because he has a strange mental condition. People see Sojin as a cold person. However, when his heart rate goes above 150 beats per minute, he turns into a whole different person called Robin. Robin is the opposite of Sojin. He's kind-hearted and looks out for others. The story gets more interesting when Sojin meets a girl who makes his heart race. However, they often end up in conflicts because of a certain issue, and the girl is confused by Sojin's changing personality. A psychiatrist named Professor Kang is studying Sojin's unusual condition. She explains that Seojin has Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID, which means he might not remember what he does, who he meets, or where he's been when he switches personalities. Dr. Kung offers Sojin hope that he can find a way to overcome his condition and find relief. Every day, Sojin wears special glasses to monitor his vital signs and practices meditation for inner peace. On a particular day, Sojin is at one of his businesses, a big amusement park in Korea. He decides not to sell balloons at the park, because he has a bad feeling about something related to balloons and a girl that might happen soon. So Jean doesn't seem very friendly towards his brother Sun Yan, who is hosting a charity event for disadvantaged children. Meanwhile, a girl named Jung Han arrives at the airport from America. She's the daughter of the circus group owner, which is currently working with Wonderland Amusement Park. Her purpose in Korea is to continue her father's business. But there's chaos at the amusement park, because a gorilla escaped from the circus enclosure. Visitors are in a panic, and even So Jean's group is scared. A woman approaches So Jean for help, but he harshly turns her away. In the midst of the chaos, So Jean tries to stay calm. Surprisingly, Hannah's arrival has a soothing effect on the gorilla, as she has cared for it since it was young. So Jean can't help but wonder why he felt so concerned about Hannah being in danger from the wild animal, especially since he didn't know her before. So Jean then asks Hana to come to his office to confirm if she's the girl he often dreams about. During her meeting, So Jean talks about a business contract that would result in the circus being shut down due to the recent gorilla incident. This decision upsets Hana because she believes the escaped gorilla was due to Wonderland's negligence in managing the enclosure. Besides, her circus had been a big part of Wonderland's popularity for many years. Under the threat of a video showing So Jean being rude to visitors during the incident, he reluctantly agrees to continue their partnership. However, it's revealed that So Jean was deceiving Hana, as Wonderland's management still plans to remove her once they have the real video footage. For the past five years, So Jean has been working hard to control himself and avoid getting close to the girl who could trigger his condition, because he doesn't want Robin to emerge again. At that moment, his assistant named Young Chun mentions that So Jean has been behaving well and staying true to his beliefs. So Jean is excited because he's going to meet Dr. Kung that day to discuss a cure for his condition. During the journey, Hana approaches So Jean to express her objections about the work contract. Eventually, she follows him to the hospital where So Jean is meeting Dr. Kung. Hana cleverly enters the hospital by using a rope between two buildings. So Jean witnesses her courage as she heads towards Dr. Kung's office. However, before reaching the intended floor, a mysterious man approaches Dr. Kung first. By accident, Hana enters the doctor's office and is shocked to find an injured doctor with a head wound. She quickly flees with the suspected attacker chasing her. So Jean sees that Hana needs help but chooses to avoid her from a distance. In the elevator, So Jean experiences a shock and his heart rate skyrockets. He transforms into Robin, who passionately wants to save Hana. Unfortunately, as he's about to confront the man, Hana falls from the building into a pool. So Jean acts quickly to rescue Hana. After a while, they wake up in the hospital, both a bit shaken from the drowning incident. Hana meets So Jean to thank him for saving her life. So Jean is puzzled by her words because he doesn't recall what he did, and it scares him to think he would jump into a dangerous situation like that. Hana notices the necklace So Jean is wearing, which triggers a memory from 15 years ago, when someone with a similar necklace saved her from falling off a bridge. So Jean tells her to leave claiming he's not the kind of person who enjoys stating others. So Jean thinks his alter ego, Robin, emerged because he has no memory of the events. He gets frustrated upon discovering that Dr. Kung has disappeared. The police are having a hard time finding the culprit because there are no witnesses and the CCTV cameras in the area were turned off by someone. Mr. Yonghunt, so Jean's father, 
witnesses the incident and advises his son to leave Korea until they find Dr. Kong. He doesn't want So Jin to create any problems, especially as he's about to become the successor of the Wonder Group. So Jin assures his father he won't repeat the events from five years ago, but the details of those events remain a mystery. Back at home, So Jin goes to a secret room in his meditation space. He reviews CCTV footage that captures Robin's heroic actions whenever he appears. So Jin records a message for Robin, warning him not to show up, because So Jin believes he doesn't need him anymore. The next day at the amusement park, So Jin remembers that Han Nod is the only witness to the crime involving Dr. Kung. The police question her about Dr. Kung and why she used a suspicious rope to enter the hospital. So Jin supports her statement. They investigate the crime scene, but when they try to recall events, Hanna suddenly gets a severe headache and can't remember the attacker. The doctor confirms that Hanna is experiencing temporary amnesia due to the shock of the incident. So Jean reluctantly tries to help her recover her memory so they can find Dr. Kong. Hanna is hesitant at first, but so Jean agrees to extend the circus contract for 10 years if she undergoes hypnotherapy to remember what happened. So Jean reassures his father, who's getting his passport ready, that they'll find Dr. Kung with the help of this witness. Meanwhile, Hanna has a counseling session with a doctor named Teju. His methods, combined with soothing music, almost help Hanna recall the attacker's face, but she's unable to do to lingering trauma. So Jean is worried that the attacker might target Hanna again, and indeed, a mysterious man resembling Dr. Kung's attacker follows her. Luckily, so Jean is there to protect her. That night, Hanna is taken to a penthouse. She questions So Jean about why he abandoned her initially, leaving her as the sole witness. The person she remembers from a few years ago is different from the arrogant So Jean she knows. So Jean wonders if it was Robin who saved her. Later that night, Hana goes alone to the ballroom to prepare for a performance. So Jean remembers his dream about a girl in danger from a falling light bulb and pushes Hana out of harm's way, saving her life. Now, So Jean has transformed into a warm and caring person thanks to his alter ego, Robin. Wonderland's security guards notice this unusual change and try to capture So Jean. Robin, with Hannah's help, escapes using a rope from her bag. Hannah starts to wonder why So Jean changed so suddenly and why his words remind her of someone. They take a taxi to one of So Jean's family homes, unaware that there's a tracking device on his clothing. Yong Hunt then instructs Yong Chun to erase CCTV footage that shows So Jean's heroic actions as Robin. Hana realizes she's fallen in love with So Jean, the same person she initially disliked. So Jean, now in Robin's form, tries to remember what happened five years ago, when he first appeared inside So Jean, causing anger in his parents. Hana gathers the courage to ask who So Jean really is because she wants to thank him once again. Despite sharing the same body as So Jean, Robin reveals he's not So Jean but his twin brother, as part of their agreement. Shortly after, the security guards from Wonderland try to capture Robin with tranquilizer darts, but they accidentally hit Hana instead. So Jean takes Hana back to his home, where Yong Hunt is waiting. The incident in the ballroom also catches the attention of Sung Yan, the hotel manager near the amusement park. He wonders if So Jean, who is usually timid and never rides the park's attractions, could really be a hero. He recalls a fire incident five years ago, when So Jean had to rescue guests stuck in an elevator. Meanwhile, at the circus area, a police officer is investigating someone suspicious before the light bulb incident. He suspects foul play in the light cable. The police take Han Na's description of the attacker, who also assaulted Dr. Kung, and it matches a man connected to Dr. Taju. Young Hunt becomes frustrated when he sees Robin inside his son's body. He insists that Robin leaves, fearing he might harm So Jean's life. Robin, however, only wants a peaceful existence without causing harm to Young Hunt. Yong Hunt asks So Jean to take medication that will make Robin unconscious, returning control to So Jean. Robin, knowing Hana is important to So Jean as the sole witness to the crime, agrees to it. Robin heads to the secret room and watches So Jean's recording, where So Jean acknowledges that Robin will always exist within him. Robin realizes Hana's importance in So Jean's life right now and asks So Jean to protect her. So Jean appears frightened. Learning that Robin is getting close to Hana, the woman who saved So Jean and brought him back to life. So Jean spreads the news of Dr. Kung's disappearance online and in newspapers. He instructs the police to check his laptop files. He's worried that Robin might suddenly emerge and ignore So Jean's vital signs. 
He believes that only Dr. Kong can help get rid of Robin. So Jin then orders Young Chun to remove Han Na and the Wonder Circus from his life once they find Dr. Kong. So Jean starts feeling physical discomfort because Robin convinced Tana to escape using a rope. This frustrates So Jean because Robin exchanged phone numbers with Pana and sent her scheduled messages the previous night. Hana confides in a friend about the man who saved her, the same person who saved her 15 years ago during a bridge incident. They both suspect that Robin is being isolated due to a power struggle. Meanwhile, So Jean's security guards continue to chase them. One day, Yang Hunt calls Sung Yan to discuss So Jean's issues. He asks Sung Yan to temporarily take over So Jean's job. One of Sung Yan's secretaries is tasked with gathering information about Dr. Kung's disappearance. It's clear that Yang Hunt wants So Jean to go to America to avoid exposing his weakness, which could harm the company's reputation. However, So Jean decides to stay in Korea because he doesn't want to run away like a coward. Hana hears from her friend Eun Chung that the contract for the Wonder Circus has been cancelled. They're disappointed, as So Jean has done this before. Upset by the news, Hana goes to talk to So Jean again. She's even willing to become a clown to gain access. While So Jean is checking the opening of the aquarium in Wonder Tower, Hana requests that her employees be reassigned to other positions, even if the circus is disbanded. So Jean is disgusted by Hana's arrival and even leaves her behind when she struggles to get up due to her heavy costume. He becomes angrier when Hana refers to him as Robin, who always comes to her rescue, unlike So Jean, who avoids danger. So Jean sees Hana as a curse and doesn't want to see her again. He gets frustrated, nearly causing his heart rate to increase. However, Hana quickly calms him down and Young Chun apologizes, assuring her that everything will return to normal once So Jean meets Dr. Kong. Meanwhile, there's a beautiful girl named Oh Jong. She used to have a close relationship with Robin in the past. Wu Jong's father even receives a scheduled message from Robin to meet up. Wu Jong is hosting a meeting with the fan club. All this while, Robin is known as a webtoon writer. At the same location, Sung Yan appears to be trying to bribe a detective to get case files about Dr. Kong, but the detective refuses. Sung Yan notices a photo that fell from Oh Jong's book. However, before he can ask more questions, Wu Jong has already left. He didn't expect So Jin to have a girlfriend. Learning this, So Jin becomes too harsh on Hana, and Young Chun tries to defend her, saying that she is already doing the right thing by taking responsibility for the circus and its staff. Later on, Young Chun gets a call from the detective. He has found Dr. Kung's files, but the laptop is now with Dr. Taju, who is helping Hana with her hypnotherapy session. During the session, Hana recalls that someone intentionally cut the light cable. After returning home, so Jean checks Dr. Kung's laptop, but there are so many files that he struggles to understand what kind of research she was working on. While on his way, so Jean sees Hana walking alone in the falling snow. At that moment, Hana's life is in danger as a man tries to run her over. So Jean realizes this and rushes to save her. He promises to keep employing her staff at Wonderland, and Hana agrees to continue her hypnotherapy to help Dr. Kung's case. That night, Hana was feeling very lonely, so she decided to visit the circus area. Out of nowhere, Robin appeared, trying to comfort her. It was strange why So Jean was acting like Robin. They both laughed and shared their frustrations about So Jean while bouncing on the trampoline. During their conversation, Hana mentioned her plan to go to America, which saddened Robin, especially when he realized it was because of So Jean. The next day, so Jean woke up feeling sore and saw a message from Robin apologizing. He went to a secret room and watched the CCT footage of Hana's visit. It turned out that last night, Robin had extended Hana's circus contract and invited her to stay in his house for her safety as a key witness. In the past, So Jean had threatened Hana, making her cry. Robin, in response, had threatened to reveal So Jean's secret to Hana. Reluctantly, So Jean had agreed to Robin's terms. He then met with Hana and explained their agreement. So Jean wanted Hana to live quietly, like a ghost, without disturbing him. He did this out of fear that Robin might do something uncontrollable that could endanger his life. Meanwhile, Yang Hunt received news that So Jean had shared a schedule for himself and Robin to switch positions at specific times. This made him extremely angry because he didn't want So Jean to willingly let Robin resurface. At the same time, Song Yan was determined to uncover So Jean's secret. He sent someone to investigate So Jean's suspicious activities. 
This undercover agent followed Robin, who was secretly following Hana. Robin led the agent to Ojong's father's cafe, a place he hadn't visited in a while. After gathering enough information about Robin, who they believed was So Jean, the agent reported back to Sung Yan. The evidence suggested that So Jean was indeed the real So Jean, because he didn't react when Hana and Ojong hit him. Apparently, when Ojong visited, she was upset that he had disappeared without updates. She also felt jealous when she saw Robin bringing Hana to her father's cafe, unable to hide her envy when she saw the person she liked getting close to another girl. The next day, So Jean woke up feeling nauseous and couldn't remember what had happened the previous night. His driver informed him that he had gotten drunk with Hana. So Jean then realized that his body had experienced what Robin had done. Hana was feeling quite anxious about meeting So Jean. She was worried that he might have seen her returning home drunk with the help of Robin. What added to her embarrassment was her peculiar behavior when she had a little too much to drink. Despite these concerns, Hana had a counseling session with Dr. Taju as part of her hypnotherapy to recall a traumatic incident that had haunted her for a long time. Dr. Taju's presence offered her some comfort during this therapy session. After her counseling, Hana got ready for a field trip with her circus team. She extended an invitation to Robin since he had become involved in planning stage sketches. However, during their journey, they noticed a strange man tailing them. Robin swiftly accelerated to evade the car following them. While they managed to escape the pursuer, Robin accidentally hit a roadside rock. This resulted in Hana losing consciousness, and Robin had no choice but to rush her to the nearest clinic. After carrying Hana and reaching the clinic, Robin's heart rate became irregular, causing him to pass out. When he eventually woke up, So Jean found himself back in control. Hana still thought he was Robin. Calling him by that name left So Jean feeling puzzled and disappointed because he was supposed to be in Gung Num for the field trip. To avoid suspicion, he had to keep up the act of being Robin and participate in all the noisy field trip activities with the staff. Hana had a nagging feeling that something was off about Robin, but she brushed it aside. She even spent some time with So Jean late at night, which actually made So Jean quite nervous. Later, they had a meeting where they introduced Robin as a painter. They asked him to paint, and So Jean had to pretend to think about it so they could forget about the fact that he couldn't paint at all. Then came the Soju drinking session. So Jean was determined to drink a lot of Soju until he passed out and turned back into his real self. But this plan didn't work because his body could handle a lot of alcohol. So Jean decided to step outside to get some fresh air. After a while, Hana followed him, and they spent some time together. During this time, Hana thanked Robin for accompanying her on the field trip and expressed her affection for him, considering the Robin she knew to be a good person. When So Jean heard Hannah's heartfelt confession, his heart started racing, and he felt warm and alive, something he hadn't experienced in a long time. The next day, So Jean decided to leave early, but Hana misunderstood it and thought that Robin had rejected her after her confession the night before. She became anxious and worried about how Robin would react when they met. Eventually, she decided to send a message to Robin, asking him to forget about what happened the previous night. So Jean got a bit uneasy when he noticed a message from Hannah on Robin's phone. He tried to unlock Robin's phone to read the message, and then he deleted it so Robin wouldn't find out. Meanwhile, the police had found the kidnapper who had taken Dr. Kung. They informed Dr. Taju, who was with the kidnapper at that moment. The police told Dr. Taju to stay calm and detain the kidnapper until they arrived. However, the kidnapper was fully aware of his status as a fugitive and shared his reasons with Dr. Taju. He couldn't forgive So Jean because of painful memories from the past. The kidnapper managed to escape after overpowering Dr. Taju and was now on his way to find Hana. The police were in pursuit as they received information about the kidnapper being on the loose. So Jean quickly located Hana, who was practicing at Wonderland. He scolded her and took her home to keep her safe. So Jean then received news that Dr. Kung was still alive, and the police rushed to the presumed location where Dr. Kung was believed to be held. Meanwhile, Hu Zhong was determined to join Wonderland Circus and was putting in a lot of effort during her training. However, she was suddenly approached by a friend who told her that someone was looking for her. To her surprise, it was So Myeon, who was trying to gather information about So Jean. He showed Oh Jong a photo of So Jean with him and asked who he was. Oh Jong's response left So Myeon confused and surprised, as she had just learned about So Jean disguising himself as Robin. 
On the other hand, Robin had taken over for So Jean during the night. He called Young Chund to check on Hana's condition during the field trip. He was relieved to hear that Hana was okay, but he couldn't help but laugh when he found out that So Jean had taken his place. Meanwhile, Hana felt frustrated because Robin hadn't responded to her message. However, she later received a message from Robin, asking her to meet him in the car garage. She felt both happy and nervous, thinking that Robin might remember their previous encounter. However, she soon realized that Robin had forgotten everything due to the influence of alcohol. The following day, So Jean received news that the kidnapper had provided false information about Dr. Kung's whereabouts. He took Han Na with him to the police station, where she identified the kidnapper as the culprit. During the testimony, the man tried to attack Han Na, but Dr. Teju swiftly calmed her down. After her police visit, Han Na received a call from Wonderland, but instead of discussing a collaboration, they inquired about the Dr. Kung and Robin situation. So Jean intervened to protect Han Na from Sung Yan's questioning, stating that her participation in the circus performance required his approval. However, this left Han Na angry because So Jean had forbidden her from taking part in the show. On the other hand, Robin was on his night shift. He visited Oh Jong's cafe, where he learned about the stories she had heard from Han Na and her friend. Robin decided to find Han Na to apologize and confess that he remembered their previous night together during the field trip. Han Na was still upset about his lack of response to her messages, so she anxiously waited. Later, Robin recorded a video for So Jean, asking him to apologize for his disappointing behavior. The next day, So Jean remembered Robin's outburst for leaving Han Na behind. He sought advice from Young Chun on how to handle emotionally distressed women. Young Chun gave him suggestions, which made So Jean interested in the Valentine's event proposal submitted by Wonderland. He offered Han Na and her team the chance to be the main act on that day, and provided them with uniforms and an orchestra to enhance the circus stage. Han Na found all these offerings excessive and told Young Chun that So Jean should be thankful for her help in locating the kidnapper, without expecting too much in return. Mr. Yong Hunt overheard their conversation and became angry at So Jean for agreeing to the circus performance at the Valentine's event. Yong Hunt confronted So Jean and demanded that he cancel the event to keep him from getting closer to Han Na. He was worried that So Jean and Robin would compete for Han Na's affection. So Jean refused his father's request, wanting to fulfill Wonderland's mission of spreading love and happiness. Hu Jong accidentally witnessed their argument and spread the news among the circus staff, leading to gossip. Han Na clarified that So Jean simply wanted to reward her. Meanwhile, So Jean met with Mr. Yong Hunt in his office and informed him that Dr. Kung was still alive but held captive. Mr. Yong Hunt was relieved but still disappointed that So Jean didn't obey him. So Jean explained his reasons, and despite his father's objections, he insisted on proceeding with the circus performance as a reward for Han Na. Mr. Yong Hunt questioned So Jean about his feelings for Han Na. Suddenly, So Jean remembered the lovely moments he had spent with Han Na over the past few days. He had been watching her from afar as she enjoyed the party with the circus staff. When Han Na returned home, she met So Jean to express her gratitude. However, she also told him not to provide excessive support as it wouldn't be available after the show. So Jean's response disappointed her, as it seemed like he was doing it as a reward. So Jean clarified that it was an approval for the compelling proposal Han Na had presented. Meanwhile, Dr. Taju and the police went to the kidnapper's house, but only found notebooks and pictures of a young child. At the same time, Hana was shopping at a convenience store when she noticed Robin secretly following her. Robin confessed that he wanted to meet her, and they walked together. Unaware of their surroundings, they crossed the street and got stopped by the police. When questioned about his identity, Robin couldn't answer because Hana was beside him. They were eventually taken to the police station for questioning. Young Chand arrived later to rescue Robin and asked about his feelings for Hana. Robin genuinely cared for her and wanted her to be one of the reasons for his comeback. Young Chand suggested meeting So Jean, but instead, Robin took Hana to the Wonderland office to comfort her. The next day, So Jean received news that the culprit had started talking about the past events. The man confessed that he began to remember an old friend, So Jean, who had once played with So Yond at Wonderland. They both got kidnapped and the kidnapper demanded a ransom. Unfortunately, their father chose not to pay and decided to search for them. So Jean managed to escape with So Yan's help, but So Yan remained there until he heard of their father's death. 
these memories from the past resurfaced in Subjin's mind, making him feel uneasy. He wanted to escape the witness room, and Hena, concerned for him, followed him to provide comfort. So Jean ended up hugging Hena because she felt like the one he needed right now. Young Chun informed Yang Hun that the culprit was the child of his deceased former driver, which shocked him. He asked Young Chun to keep an eye on So Jean's whereabouts. After recovering a bit, So Jean gave his testimony about So Yan's statement, confirming their kidnapping and escape. However, he avoided questions about his former driver's case, who had stolen money from his father for the ransom. This puzzled the police, wondering why So Yan was targeting Dr. Kung. So Jean explained that Dr. Kung possessed something valuable that could help him in life. After finishing his busy schedule, So Jean returned home to rest. Hanada noticed something was off with his condition and found out he had a fever. She took care of him lovingly and monitored his condition to help him recover quickly. However, So Jean didn't accept her care, which made him very frustrated. He regretted Hanada's sudden presence in his life as it forced him to revisit the bitterness of having Robin return. The next day, Sung Yan went to the police station to meet So Yan. He went to help So Jean find Dr. Kung, but his real plan was to work with So Yan to hide Dr. Kung so that So Jean couldn't get his medication. While talking to So Yan, he felt that something was off. This person didn't seem like the real So Yan. They provided the exact same testimony about what happened to So Yan and So Jean. The police went back to So Yan's place to find more evidence. They found an empty photo album that only had the location of an orphanage and the year. The police went to that orphanage and found more evidence, revealing So Yan's real name as Un Song Goon. The following day, So Jean watched a video message recorded by Robin the night before. Robin explained that he existed because So Jean needed a reason to keep living, and Robin was that reason. He encouraged So Jean to continue living happily. Meanwhile, the police kept investigating So Yan who was using a fake name. They conducted a lie detector test, and he passed. So Jean went to the police station to see for himself. When he interrogated So Yan, the man still insisted that he wasn't the real So Yan. Dr. Taju, who was also there, concluded that the person claiming to be So Yan had been hypnotized and manipulated to implant false memories. The police then talked to Hana to get her statement as a witness. She told them that the person in custody wasn't the real So Yan. Now, Hana was asked by the police to recall the person she saw at the crime scene. Hana made an appointment to meet with Dr. Taju, but she was currently busy helping someone who was hidden behind the bedroom wall. It turned out that Dr. Taju had met with Dr. Kung, whom he had intentionally kidnapped. He wanted So Jean to apologize and understand his past mistakes. However, Hana discovered the abduction plan and even used hypnosis to make Dr. Kung go willingly without force. Dr. Taju also manipulated the man arrested as the culprit to pose as a fake So Yan. Currently, Dr. Taju had had a guest, who turned out to be Hana, and he was shocked to see that she had brought Robin along. He didn't know who Robin was yet, as Dr. Taju was aware that So Jean didn't have a twin brother. Dr. Taju remained cautious when facing Robin, who had a distinct personality from So Jean. He began a counseling session with Hana to help her remember the kidnapper's face. During this session, Hana delved into her subconscious mind. She found herself on a rooftop, a place she had visited when she was chased by Dr. Kung's kidnapper. Taiju informed her that Dr. Kung was now a suspect, but Hana firmly believed she had seen Dr. Kung fall and bleed at that moment. After leaving Taiju's house, she felt anxious because she had revisited the crime scene. When she finally identified Taiju as the kidnapper, he received a call from Sung Yan, who wanted to meet. Sung Yan was interested in the mental hacking concept discussed by Dr. Taju. He planned to exploit So Jean's weaknesses to pressure Yang Hunt into removing his son from the position of Wonderland CEO. Taju, as a cunning man, saw the opportunity to learn more about So Jean's twin through Sung Yan. At that moment, Dr. Taju realized that So Jean suffered from multiple personalities. Now, Robin brought Hanna to discuss work at the Wonderland office. Instead, she inquired about Robin's condition, as he had been appearing sad recently. This led her to follow Robin as he walked on a bridge. Robin felt restless, admitting that he had never felt like ending his life by jumping from that bridge. He explained to Hana that it wasn't him at that time, it was Sojin. The next day, Sojin met with Dr. Teju to discuss mental hacking, 
especially after hearing accusations against Dr. Kung for involvement in his abduction several years ago. This suspicion had been bothering So Jean, despite Hana urging him to trust Dr. Kung. He couldn't trust anyone due to the trauma from the abduction and felt disappointed in his father for not rescuing him back then. So Jean delved into researching Dr. Kung's mental hacking, which eventually exhausted him to the point of passing out. The following day, So Jean didn't wake up. Instead, it was Robin who took control. Young Chun was frustrated because there was an important meeting with the board members that day. He transformed Robin's appearance to resemble So Jean and asked him to study the presentation materials thoroughly to handle any questions. Robin found it odd that So Jean had chosen to escape and not wake up, forcing Robin to step in. He had to be cautious, especially since So Jean's disappearance was now known, and there were people who wanted to remove him as Wonderland CEO. So Jean instructed Young Chun to keep Robin isolated or send him to the hospital to keep his existence a secret. Robin felt frustrated that he was always seen as a threat to So Jean's life, even though he was created by So Jean himself out of regret. Nobody was aware that Robin had taken over So Jean's role that day, not even Hana. Bu Zhong accidentally saw Robin following Hana and informed her, but when she went outside, Robin had disappeared. Instead, she saw Robin heading towards the haunted house. It turned out that Robin received a call from the real So Yan, asking to meet at that location. So Yan intended to trap Robin and make So Jean suffer by revisiting painful memories. And now remember that Young Chun had once mentioned So Jean never entered the haunted house since the kidnapping incident. Finally, she followed Robin to rescue him. When Hana learned that Robin was facing the real So Yan, she noticed that Robin seemed unaffected by all the traumatic events that had caused So Jean's psychiatric illness. Robin showed no fear as he entered the haunted house in the warehouse where So Jean had been held captive. So Yan felt triumphant, thinking he had easily trapped his adversary. However, he was mistaken because someone else was secretly following Robin into the abduction location. Nonetheless, So Yan continued with his plans and kept Robin captive there. Hana had arrived at the location where Robin was, and she decided to share her location live so that the police in Yongchun could find them. Robin was unconscious due to the anesthesia administered by So Yan. After some time, Robin woke up, and the transformation back into So Jean was complete. So Jean recognized the place and began to experience the painful memories triggered by So Yan. Luckily, Hana quickly found So Jean and helped him stay calm. So Yan was frustrated because Hana had disrupted his plan. He locked both of them in the warehouse and activated a button that released poisonous gas. They tried to save themselves, but there was only one oxygen mask. So Yan assumed So Jean would abandon Hana to save himself, but he was wrong. So Jean gave the oxygen mask to Hana, sacrificing himself. Eventually, So Jean lost consciousness and asked for Robin's help. A while later, Robin took control of So Jean's body and helped him survive in the toxic gas filled environment. So Yan now understood that So Jean suffered from multiple personalities and he left the place before the police arrived. So Yan returned to meet Dr. Kung, secretly holding a grudge against her for interfering in his life. He felt angry that his true identity had been revealed because of his past with So Jean. Now that So Jean and Han Na had returned safely, Han Na was still concerned about So Jean. However, she suddenly remembered Robin coming to her rescue. She asked a friend, but it turned out that Robin wasn't at the location. This left Han Na puzzled because she was certain that Robin had come to help. She went to So Jean's room to check on his condition and was surprised to see So Jean's injured hand. She also recalled that the night before, Robin had injured his hand to save her. So Jean told Han Na to stay while he would rest and summon Robin. After a while, Robin arrived, taking over from the sleeping So Jean. Han Na was confused by the sudden change in So Jean's personality. She explained So Jean's condition and mentioned that they were the same person but with different personalities. Robin emphasized to Han Na that the one she cared for was Robin, not So Jean. Meanwhile, the real So Yan informed Dr. Kung about his mission to destroy So Jean's shield, causing him to suffer from feelings of rejection. Currently, Robin is upset with So Jean for revealing his identity to the woman he loves. However, So Jean is grateful because Robin came to help him save himself. Hana is now confused about her feelings, as Robin and So Jean have completely different statements about themselves. Robin claims that they are different people, while Hana insists that her affection is only for Robin. 
She helps so Jean save himself out of concern for him, even if it means sacrificing her own life. At the police station, where they are focused on gathering more evidence to locate So Yan quickly. At the same time, So Jean visits the police station to clear Dr. Kung's name as a suspect. He firmly believes that Dr. Kung didn't do anything wrong to him. The police suggest conducting an open investigation, but So Jean wants to meet So Yan. He admits that he remembers the painful memories but finds one of So Yan's explanations confusing. It doesn't match his own recollections. So Jean then meets Teju, the real So Yan, with the intention of seeking counseling and sharing his experiences. He talks about a new symptom where he disappears for an entire day, replaced by another side of himself. Dr. Taju diagnoses that his main identity is slowly fading away. Dr. Kung overhears their conversation, and Teju takes a deliberate action by sending a letter to Robin to make him resent So Jean even more. Teju deliberately provokes Robin to fight for a place within So Jean. This terrifies So Jean because he doesn't want to lose his identity to Robin. When So Jean meets Teju to find answers about his memories, he expresses his desire to continue living as Robin. Teju informs him of a way to preserve himself. Robin follows Hana after obtaining her location from Young Chund, worried about his condition and the possibility of disappearing. He assures Hana that he and his feelings are real as Robin. The following day, So Jean wakes up and realizes that Robin brought him there. He then meets Hana and asks her to return because the change in him is due to her. So Jean successfully convinces Hana to come back to Seoul. During their journey, so Jean expresses his happiness at being close to Hana and recalls the sightseeing trip they once took. Hana is surprised to realize that she was with So Jean at that time. Sometimes discussing Robin and So Jean is still difficult for her to accept, and it makes her feel upset. Meanwhile, So Yan discovers a video message uploaded by So Jean intentionally to meet and explain the issues between them. The police are holding a press conference to discuss the kidnapping case of So Jean and So Yan 22 years ago, with Yang Hunt's approval to bring it to the media. On the other hand, So Myan is aware of Yang Hunt's plan to bring in a famous doctor to treat So Jean's illness. He meets Yang Hunt and threatens him to take the position of Wonderland CEO. He is currently holding an emergency meeting to discuss the issue. So Jean understands that So Myan did it because he found out about his condition and follows his plan to step down from the CEO position. Yang Hunt is angry and explains that he is now in a battle to improve his life. Next, So Ji meets Teju for a consultation. He mentions that he remembered a lot because So Yan lured him back to the kidnapping warehouse. Teju, on the other hand, informs him that Robin was desperately looking for Hana after she disappeared. So Jean is open about telling Hana about his illness, which makes Teju feel sorry for Robin, fearing he might lose his identity. Teju continues to inquire about Robin to find his weakness, but So Jean lies and says Robin is okay. Hana goes to see Young Chun to learn about the events from five years ago involving So Jean and Robin. Apparently, both of them loved the same woman at the time, but she couldn't accept the situation and saw So Jean as a terrifying monster due to his did. This led to Robin emerging as a harsher and crueler third personality. After a counseling session with So Jean, Teju meets Hana to gather information about him. He even hypnotizes Hana to get information about Terry, who is So Jean's third personality. Teju deliberately sends a scheduled message to trap Robin. Now, Robin has taken control of So Jean's body and is heading to Wonderland Hall to meet Hana. But when he arrives, he finds Dr. Kung tied up and unconscious. After confirming Robin's presence, Teju takes action to hypnotize Robin and bring out the third personality, Terry. He becomes angry upon seeing Dr. Kung because she managed to find medicine for So Jean. Teju records all of Robin's actions and sends them to Hana. Realizing it's not really Robin, and Hana immediately requests police assistance. Meanwhile, Terry manages to frighten Dr. Kung as she faces the threat of being choked. In the midst of her fear, Dr. Kung reminds Robin that he is inherently a kind-hearted person who enjoys helping others. After a while, Robin regains control and suppresses the Terry personality within him. He attempts to assist Dr. Kung in leaving the place, but they find themselves trapped in a room filled with tear gas. Robin perseveres, struggling to find a way out, and eventually they are rescued, with Dr. Kung miraculously surviving. Shortly after, Hana approaches and warmly embraces Robin. She takes him home so he can tell her all about the incident, 
hoping to prevent any suspicion from the police. Robin is anxious, knowing that So Yond is aware of his existence, and now reassures him and vows to protect him. But for Robin, he must safeguarding So Jean. This declaration of loyalty angers him as he doesn't want to share Hannah's affection with anyone else. The next day, Hannah receives a letter from Robin, intended for So Jean. In the letter, Robin advises her to stay vigilant, as there may be potential betrayals among those close to her. Shortly after, So Jean receives an email from So Yond, in which he presents his version of the events from the kidnapping 22 years ago. However, So Jean's response to the email infuriates So Yond as it contradicts his own recollections. On the other hand, So Jean is feeling disappointed upon discovering that Dr. Kung has vanished after being transported to the hospital. The situation raises suspicions, especially when the ambulance fails to reach its destination after leaving Wonderland. Meanwhile, Dr. Tanju pays a visit to the police station with a plan in mind. He seeks approval from the chief of police to gain access to the prison and meet Chong Mun Sik. In a rather peculiar turn of events, he hypnotizes all the police officers present, effectively making them obey his every command. Following this, Teju heads to the prison to meet So Yond, whom he has also subjected to his hypnotic influence. He instructs So Yond to uncover the location of a co-conspirator involved in the kidnapping, someone incarcerated in the same facility as Mun Sik. However, when So Yond learns that this co-conspirator is his own father, he's overwhelmed with anger and immediately attacks Mun Sik, causing the latter to be hospitalized due to severe bleeding. Teju, intrigued by Mun Sik's reaction and the subsequent outburst from So Yond, becomes curious. Meanwhile, Robin pays a visit to Oh Jong, having learned about his condition from an overheard conversation between her father and Hana. She expresses concern for Robin, who mysteriously disappeared without a word. The following day, Hana informs Young Chund about So Jin's disappearance. At this moment, it's Robin who's in control of Sojin's body. Everyone believes that the one who attended counseling with the famous doctor is Robin. The doctor's diagnosis suggests that Sojin might have disappeared because he keeps falling asleep repeatedly without waking up as himself. After the counseling session, Robin contacts Dr. Tanju to meet and discuss the symptoms he's experiencing since he absorbs Sojin's main identity. It has become clear to Robin that he encountered Hei Na in the hallway the previous night and was subjected to multiple hypnosis sessions by Teju. Robin urges So Jean to reveal the truth that Teju is, in fact, So Yond. The following day, Hana discloses everything to So Jean and helps him devise a plan to apprehend So Yond by pretending to be Robin. Hana is aware that So Jean is immune to hypnosis, so she instructs him to meet with Dr. Teju and disclose everything. She also involves the police in order to arrest So Yond and execute the plan smoothly. Now, So Jean finds himself at Dr. Taju's house, pretending to be the cheerful Robin. The counseling session begins, and So Jean pretends to delve into his subconscious, aiming to bait Taju into admitting he's actually So Yond. So Jean crafts his childhood memories in a way to make Taju slip up, which eventually happens. Taju confesses that he is So Yond, and this revelation shocks So Yond when he realizes the person before him is Sojin. Sojin proceeds to clarify the events that fueled Soyeon's hatred back then, revealing that Soyeon's father was the accomplice in the kidnapping. He claims they were in the same position back then, both abandoned by their parents. However, Soyeon remains skeptical of Sojin's manipulated memories. Soyeon decides to leave but not before informing Sojin that Dr. Kung is at his house. He promptly rescues Dr. Kung and takes her to safety. So Yan then manages to escape without resistance from the police by using hypnosis to make everyone obey his commands. He proceeds to the hospital where Mun Sik is being treated and holds him hostage, hoping to extract the truth about the kidnapping. He's still unwilling to accept that his father is accused of being involved. Mun Sik, out of fear, lies to prevent So Yan from unleashing his anger. Meanwhile, So Jin finally reunites with Dr. Kung. She suggests that So Yond might have suppressed memories he couldn't handle. Dr. Kung advises So Jean to put an end to So Yond's relentless attacks. The prolonged ordeal takes a toll on Hannah's health, and So Jean takes care of her, returning the favor she once extended to him. He even insists that Hannah stays home for her safety. So Jean then records a video message for Robin, informing him that Hannah is unwell. The police continue their investigation, tracking So Yond's movements. 
They even discover his purchases of cotton and a laptop using his credit card. The next day, so Gene is surprised to find his refrigerator stocked with food, suspecting that Robin might be behind it. He quickly checks the CCTV footage to see what Robin was up to when he was with Hana the previous night. Later, so Jean invites Hana for dinner and asks her to share how Robin made her fall in love and brought smiles to her face. While they dine, the lights suddenly go out, and so Yand appears behind Hana. He had sneaked into the house by hiding in Young Chun's car trunk. So Yand even attacks Young Chun to gain entry. After Young Chun regains consciousness, he checks on So Jean's condition and panics upon realizing that So Yan has control of So Jean's phone. So Yan orders him to call the police and report that he is at So Jean's house. Now, Hana and So Jean are hostages, tied to chairs. So Jean pleads with So Yan to release Hana and let her go, urging her to escape to safety to avoid being caught up in a dangerous situation. The police rush to the scene after Young Chun's report, but they can't enter So Jean's heavily secured house filled with numerous CCTV cameras. Meanwhile, So Yan is busy with his laptop, preparing for a video call with Yang Hunt and Mun Seek. So Jean continues to plead for Hana's release, but So Yan accuses him of wanting to avoid feeling guilty if something happens to her. Hana, however, chooses to stay by So Jean's side, refusing to leave him to face So Yan alone. As So Yan establishes a video call with Yang Hunt, the latter apologizes for his actions 22 years ago, and expresses regret for the difficult life So Yan has led since then. Yang Han offers to release So Jin and stop pursuing him, but So Yan becomes angry, as money is not what he desires in this situation. So Jin disconnects the call, making So Yan furious, seeing both father and son avoiding their problems. So Jin proposes a deal, offering to give all his wealth to So Yan. So Yan then discusses the truth revealed by Mun Seek. If Mun Seek is not the real kidnapper, so Jean suggests placing him in a safe location to confess the truth. But if So Jean's claim is true, he wants So Yan to follow his request. They ultimately agree, and So Yan orders the police to bring Mun Seek to him. Dr. Kung is puzzled about how to prevent So Jean and So Yan from being devastated after hearing Mun Seek's story of the actual kidnapping incident. Detective Ne insisted that for now, the top priority was the safety of everyone, not the truth. He wanted Munsik to say that So Yan's father was innocent. When Munsik arrived, So Yan prevented them from entering his house, so they set up another video call from inside the police car. During the call, Munsik revealed that he knew So Yan's father and shared information about So Jin and his wealthy parents, as he used to work as their driver. After a moment of hesitation, he stated that So Yan's father had no involvement in the kidnapping. So Yan breathed a sigh of relief, while So Jin struggled to believe it. So Jean replayed the memory in his head repeatedly, causing panic and shortness of breath. So Yan taunted So Jean, suggesting that his illness was due to his tendency to lie, reshaping his own thoughts. Hana urged So Jean to stay calm and confront his issues, promising to support him no matter what. So Jean eventually gave in, wanting to apologize to So Yan for his mistakes. However, when he saw a tattoo on Mun Seek's wrist, he was forced to relive a painful memory. In that memory, Mun Seek told So Yan to meet his father because he had money from the kidnapping of So Jin. But when he arrived, he discovered that the man had died in a car accident. So Yan's father was indeed the mastermind behind the kidnapping, along with So Jin. So Yan confessed to So Jin that he now remembered the missing pieces of his memory, leaving him disappointed. So Yan decided to let both of them go, but So Jin insisted on going with him. So Jin wanted So Yan to keep his promise and start treatment to live a healthy life, freed from haunting memories. Meanwhile, So Yan was taken to the police station for processing. So Jean decided to calm himself down by taking a night walk, and Hana joined in to provide comfort. She assured So Jean that he was a kind-hearted person who forgave easily, even those who caused him suffering. So Jean confided in Hana, revealing that his father, Yang Hunt, had always looked down on him because of his perceived weakness. He was determined to become strong and surpass his father. On the other hand, Yang Hunt grew impatient waiting for news from So Jin. He instructed Yang Chun to call Hana and inquire about his son's condition. During the phone call, Yang Hunt apologized for everything he had done in the past. So Jin and Hana return home, and So Jin immediately prepared medicine for Hana to prevent her from getting sick. Surprisingly, So Jin expressed his love for her and asked for permission to love her openly. 
This shot Kena, and she questioned So Jean about his true feelings for her. She suspected that So Jean only saw her as a means to resolve his issues through medication. Later, Hana decided to move to her friend's house and left a message for both So Jean and Robin. Meanwhile, Robin woke up and briefly remembered the events of the previous night. He saw Hana hugging So Jean and preventing her from leaving when faced with So Yan. Robin felt disappointed in Hana for choosing to stay with So Jean. When he went to Hana's room, he found a letter she had left before moving. Meanwhile, Sung Yan visited Oh Jong's father's shop after learning that Robin often conducted business there. Eves dropped on their conversation, which revolved around his social security number and an apartment. Sung Yan became intrigued by the mystery surrounding these details. Robin invited Han Na to meet at the shopping center, where they picked out decorations for Robin's room. He intentionally chose items that matched Han Na's taste because he wanted to make her happy. During their shopping trip, Han Na wondered why Robin hadn't asked about the events of the previous night. Robin explained that he didn't want to dwell on it and trusted Han Na to handle it. However, Han Na's response made him anxious about her safety, fearing she might disappear. Han Na reassured Robin and he finally confessed that he would introduce himself as Robin in a press conference with his fans. The following day, So Jean received news from the police that So Yan had remained silent since his arrest. So Jean decided to meet So Yan in the interrogation room and attempted to communicate with him. He gave So Yan a drawing he had found in his house, which belonged to So Yan. It was a reminder of their close friendship and their past help with schoolwork. So Jean believed that he had brought Robin into existence because he remembered So Yan. So Yan finally spoke up and told So Jean to stop visiting him, but So Jean refused because he still considered So Yan a friend. Meanwhile, Dr. Kung was proud to see So Jean looking well, but she was worried about Robin gaining more strength within So Jean. She wanted to help So Jean recover before Robin fully took over, but So Jean refused and chose to live on his own terms. At the same time, Han Na met with Young Chun to ask about the consequences if Robin introduced himself to the world. Young Chun strongly opposed the idea, fearing it would endanger So Jin's position. He believed that Yang Hunt would be angry and isolate Robin, and So Jin's efforts to hide his illness from the Wonder Group board would be in vain. So Jin headed to the Wonder Circus office and tried to socialize with Han Na's staff, but she seemed annoyed by his interference. Still, she felt guilty and continued to accompany him. Meanwhile, Dr. Kung met with Yang Hunt to discuss his son's condition, explaining that Robin was getting stronger due to Han Na's presence. Later, Yang Hunt called Han Na for a meeting and inquired about her relationship with Robin and So Jean. He thanked her for helping So Jean face his problems without relying on Robin, but he also hoped she would leave So Jean so that his son could live a more normal life. Apparently, Robin overheard this conversation. During that time, Robin invited Han Na to his apartment where he was preparing for an interview. However, Hana pleaded with him to cancel the event, expressing her concern for So Jean's well-being as he was taking a significant risk in his life. Although Robin felt disappointed, he eventually agreed to Hana's request. Meanwhile, Song Yan was frustrated by Robin canceling the interview, as he had been waiting for an opportunity to remove So Jean from his CEO position. He devised an alternative plan to make So Jean step down without directly threatening his CEO position. The following day, So Jean met with Yang Hunt after seeing a message from Robin indicating that he needed to investigate the previous day's conversation between Han Na and Yang Hunt. So Jean became angry when he discovered that Yang Hunt was attempting to remove Han Na from his life. He chose to defend Han Na and reveal Robin to the media because he didn't want to lose what was rightfully his. The next day, So Jean met Yang Hunt to ask him to stop interfering in his life and rejected Yang Hunt's attempt to separate Han Na from him and Robin. Meanwhile, Song Yan tried to expose So Jin's secrets to the media to undermine his position as the CEO of Wonderland. He informed the media about Robin's apartment location to cover the postponed interview. And now was shocked to see many reporters and called Young Chun for help. He arrived with So Jin, who was determined to reveal Robin's identity to the media. However, Hana stopped him and took him away, expressing her anger and concern for his well-being. So Jin asked Hana about her feelings for him and urged her to consider them before making a decision. Young Chun arrived and told So Jin to go home, but he refused, wanting to reveal Robin, the one who brought happiness to Hana. Young Chun pleaded with So Jin, but reporters mistakenly believed Hana was Robin. 
Son Yan was frustrated that the reporters failed to uncover Robin's true identity. On the other hand, Hina insisted to So Jean that her actions were not for her own sake. She rejected So Jean's concern for her, but he kept trying to persuade her. Later that evening, Hina met with Robin to fill him in on all the recent events. Robin's memories were slowly fading, and he tried to find out what had happened to Hina. They spent time together like a loving couple, shopping for matching items. Hana was taken aback by the significant change in So Jean after he decided to live alongside Robin. This not only left Hana confused but also had the same effect on Young Chun, after he learned that So Jean had stopped his treatment. Hana then scolded So Jean for discontinuing his treatment, which he did to maintain Robin, whom Hana loved. Meanwhile, Song Yan kept brainstorming ways to bring down Wonderland. He arranged to meet with a reporter to provide information about Robin and So Jean having dissociative identity disorder. Song Yan instructed the reporter to investigate, promising further support if they worked diligently. At the same time, Hana was struggling with her emotions. She looked sad when thinking about So Jean, who was willing to stop his treatment to avoid losing the man she loved. Meanwhile, Robin went to visit Hana, but he noticed someone following him during the trip, and it turned out to be Sung Yan, who also worked as a reporter. Robin was upset with Hana because she seemed to deny his existence just when he wanted to live and be recognized by the woman he loved. While they were on the road, their car was suddenly hit by another vehicle. Soon after, the police arrived and asked for So Jean's identity, but he refused to reveal it because he didn't want to expose his secret. Even when Hana tried to provide her identity, she was also taken into custody. Eventually, they were brought to the police station for further questioning. The man who had hit them found Robin's behavior strange for not disclosing his true identity. Hana decided to seek help from Young Chund. However, she noticed a reporter talking on the phone with Song Yan at that moment. Shortly after, many reporters showed up to interview her. Hana had to come up with a quick plan and admitted the presence of Robin, who used the pen name So Jean for his writing. Song Yan felt frustrated because his plan had completely backfired. The next day, Hana shared the events of the previous night with So Jean. She felt guilty about her hesitation, but So Jean thanked her for helping them find a way to live together. Meanwhile, Yang Hunt was furious about the article regarding Robin. However, he was later visited by Wonderland's public relations team, who praised So Jean for becoming an icon for the company. This made So Yan even angrier, as his position was slowly being threatened by So Jean. So Jean and Robin received many invitations for class reunions and award events with their old friends. Tonight, Robin was attending an award event with Anna. They were both nervous but looked harmonious on the red carpet. Robin won an award for the best webtoon writer, and Anna was proud of him. They shared a kiss, and Robin promised to win more awards for her. Elsewhere, Wu Zhong went on a bicycle ride with Eun Chung, who encouraged her to express her sadness about Robin choosing Anna as his girlfriend. Boon Chung then confessed his feelings to Oh Jong. Now Robin received an offer to host a radio show about love. So Myon heard the show and had his assistant call in, but he became even more upset when his assistant expressed a desire to leave him. The next day, when So Jean woke up, he could remember what happened the night before with Robin. But Robin was slowly losing his memories. He went to see Dr. Kung and asked about what was causing this. Dr. Kung told him that this was something she had hoped for as they could now work together to create a better personality. Robin realized that he was slowly fading away. He'd isolated himself at home, but Hay not came because she was worried. He asked her to leave to calm himself down, which made Hana find his sudden sadness strange. She called So Jean to ask about Robin's condition, but So Jean lied and said it was normal. Later, So Jean went to see Dr. Kung, feeling upset about having to let Robin go. Thanks to Hana, so Jean had come to accept Robin's presence within himself. As night fell, Hana was still awake, waiting for Robin. She sent him many messages, but received no reply. Both of them felt restless, each for their own reasons. Robin didn't want to make Hana sad by telling her that he was going to disappear. The next day, So Jean celebrated Hana's birthday by making seaweed soup for her. He encouraged her to eat without worrying about Robin. They had plans to meet so Hana could ask Robin directly. However, when night fell, it wasn't Robin who woke up, but So Jean himself. He had to pretend to be Robin to call U Jong, who was asking about the event he was attending. So Jean had no choice but to be honest with Young Chund about being So Jean. After getting ready, So Jean went to meet Hena, who believed he was Robin. 
had not found it odd when So Jean didn't start the car. A bit later, Young Chun arrived and helped So Jean escape so he wouldn't have to drive. So Jean then joined a radio broadcast. However, Hanna's friend surprised her for her birthday and proposed to her. Hanna seemed very happy with the surprise, but suddenly, Robin woke up upon hearing the loud noise. He was confused because he couldn't remember the recent events, but Oo Jong helped him by showing a video recording of Hanna's birthday celebration. Robin felt a wave of sadness when he saw that Hanna couldn't recognize that So Jean was the one hosting the radio show instead of him. Later, Robin called Young Chun and invited him for a drink. But Young Chun had no clue that he was talking to Robin. Young Chun even mentioned that Robin wouldn't wake up because So Jean had managed to eliminate him to win Hana. Robin was troubled but decided to talk to Hana. He met with her and gave her a painting as a gift, and they spent time reminiscing about when they first met. The next day, Young Chun told So Jean about himself and had no trouble remembering things. He could even recall Robin in his memories when he felt scared about disappearing. When night fell, Robin woke up with his memories gradually fading away. He went to see Dr. Kung and requested to have his memories erased immediately. He didn't want to live while forgetting the people around him due to his fading memories. Afterward, he asked Hana to visit his childhood home with him, where he shared memories of living with his two older brothers and mother. He became emotional when recalling a memory of his mother leaving for work but it turned out that it wasn't a real memory. Hana tried to help fulfill the illusions in Robin's mind, and she enjoyed spending time with him. However, Robin was hesitant to tell her why he chose to disappear from So Jean's life. The next day, they returned to the same spot, and Robin told Hana the same story as the day before, about losing his memory, which made Hana even sadder. He called Dr. Kung to ask about his lost memories, and Dr. Kung's explanation left Hana even more upset. She rushed to the place where they had buried the request the day before. There Hanna read a letter written by Robin. She couldn't hide her sadness as she read his words, saying he might disappear while she read the letter. Robin expressed gratitude for leaving a trace as Robin before vanishing completely. Robin waited for Hanna until she fell asleep, but when she returned, So Jean was there instead. She was disappointed in So Jean for keeping such an important secret from her. However, So Jean was also helpless in maintaining Robin's presence. All he could do was comfort Hana as she cried over Robin's departure. Hana regretted her idea of bringing Robin and So Jean together. So Jean denied it, saying that Robin had lived according to his wishes for a few days. He chose to calm himself down and received a timed message from Robin. Robin told him about the things that made Hana happy and asked So Jean to continue comforting her when he disappeared. He let go of Hana for So Jean knowing that Sojin also cared for Hana. Day by day, Hana couldn't hide her sadness, even when Robin called. She met him on a bridge one day and honestly told him she wasn't ready to lose him. But Robin asked her to accept what was going to happen so he could leave and forget his memories of her. However, those memories suddenly resurfaced and began to fade again. Robin felt a deep sadness as he forgot the memories of being with Hana. Hana, along with her friends, came up with a plan to help Robin remember before he disappeared. They organized an event to recreate some of Robin's cherished moments. Hana even proposed to Robin to show him that his most precious memories were not completely gone. They spent quality time together, watching video messages from friends and Robin even painted a picture of Hana. But suddenly his talent for painting vanished. Hana noticed and invited him to have a meal, but Robin said he couldn't stay any longer. Hana quickly contacted her friends and family to say goodbye to Robin before he left. After meeting everyone, Robin wanted some alone time with Hana. She gave him a video message from So Jean, thanking Robin for saving her life. Robin asked Hana to continue living happily, even though he wouldn't be there. Later, Dr. Kum met Robin and helped him disappear through a treatment session. So Jean woke up shortly afterward. Hana was disappointed that Robin had truly left her, and she went to his apartment to find solace. Both Hana and So Jean felt the loss deeply. The next day, So Jean took Hana to the places she had been with Robin, but she still felt sadness and couldn't fully embrace the moments with So Jean. She even asked him to stop consoling her because she felt unworthy of it. Throughout it all, Hana struggled with her feelings, torn between wanting Robin to stay and hoping for So Jean's recovery, even though it seemed impossible. So Jean got a call from Dr. Kung, who asked about his emotional state. She explained that he was feeling strange because of the merging of his thoughts and personality with Robin's. 
had not decided to go home and watch Robin's birthday video to remember the happy moments they had shared. Meanwhile, Sung Yan received news that he was being removed as CEO, and so Jean was taking his place. So Jean prepared for his inauguration as CEO of Wonderland. During a press event, So Jean's thoughts still carried traces of Robin's, and he even repeated something Robin had once said. Sung Yan felt increasingly threatened and interrupted the event, challenging So Jean to prove his artistic abilities. The tension rose as everyone awaited So Jean's response. So Jean accepted the challenge and drew, just as Robin had done before. So Myon continued to press him with tricky questions. So Jean became confused as he struggled to draw and operate the car. He even effortlessly unlocked Robin's apartment door, revealing that Robin's memories had merged with his. From that moment on, So Jean made a breakthrough by continuing to create webtoons and carry on Robin's work. I now went to see So Jean and accused him of hiring someone else to do the drawing work. But then, So Jean revealed to her that he had absorbed Robin's abilities, including his drawing skills. He explained that Robin had lost his drawing ability because he was thinking of Hana. So Jean invited Hana to a special place for her birthday and confessed his feelings for her once again. This time, Hana didn't reject him and embraced So Jean's presence. From then on, their lives became much happier. Moral lesson from the story if you happen to have more than one personality, it's a good idea if one of them can draw. You never know, you might end up becoming an artist and a CEO without really planning for it.